Those who are familiar with St. John Bosco's supernatural dreams, which reveal the state of his oratory boy's souls, often forget that while these visions saddened him in part, they also assured him that most of his boys lived habitually in the grace of God. Everybody remembers his dream on hell, as well they should, but neglect relating his vision of heaven. An oratory boy that most people know about as St. Dominic Savio, because he was canonized, but I think there were many, many saints of the oratory, and today, through well-documented stories, I intend to prove it. The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Matthew Miller. Subscribe for new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. One day in 1871, as many boys who knew that Don Bosco would soon be going to Rome were crowding about him in the playground, one stood up on tiptoe and whispered into his ear, Say this and this to the Pope. When recreation was over, Don Bosco went up to his room and sent for that boy. Upon being asked to repeat what he had said but moments before, the youngster replied, I didn't tell you anything. Don Bosco went to Rome and forgot about the boy's message, but on his return to the oratory, the same lad came up to him and said, Don Bosco, you are to give the Pope this message. Please do tell him. Don Bosco again sent for him for questioning, and again the boy's reply was, I didn't tell you anything. I, I really didn't. He said it with so much candor that Don Bosco didn't insist, convinced that the Lord had spoken to him both times through that boy. When he went to Rome again, he gave the Pope the message. We do not know this boy's identity. We only know that he later became a Salesian, a priest, and a missionary. On another occasion, Don Bosco was preoccupied about a very important matter and undecided on what course to follow. While he was saying Mass, suddenly, at the elevation, in a flash, he saw the course of action that would seemingly solve his problem. At ease once more, he thanked God. After Mass, his altar boy approached him and said, Do what came to your mind at the elevation. Amazed, Don Bosco went up to his room and sent for the youngster. But he was in for another surprise, for upon being questioned, the latter replied that he couldn't even remember having spoken to him after Mass. Other exceptional incidents proved the saintliness of many oratory boys. One day, while escorting a visiting priest to the altar of Mary Help of Christians, Don Bosco saw a lad suspended in mid-air, wrapped in adoration before the tabernacle at the rear of the main altar. Somewhat disconcerted by their arrival, the lad floated like a feather down to Don Bosco's feet and asked for pardon on his knees. Don't worry, Don Bosco told him. Just go and join your companions. Then, turning to the priest, he calmly remarked, one would assign such things to the Middle Ages. Yet they do happen today. Once, on entering the church through the main entrance at a time when it was empty, he saw one of his pupils high aloft, facing the large painting of Mary Help of Christians above the main altar. Duplicating the feet of St. Joseph of Cupertino, he had leapt into the air in an outburst of love to kiss Mary's image. Don Bosco himself spoke of these occurrences on several occasions. Monsignor Scotton heard him tell an equally astounding story, that probably took place after 1874. One morning, a 12- or 13-year-old lad, without leave, walked up to Don Bosco's room and, bursting in with an air of authority, told him, Right. Don Bosco, quite used to this innocent boy's numerous charisms, took up his pen and, at the lad's dictation, wrote down the names and surnames of boys, mostly from Emilia, a region of northern Italy, who had been enrolled at the oratory through a trick of the Freemasons for the purpose of corrupting their schoolmates and eventually enticing them to join their secret society. All these boys carried membership cards. The lad revealed all he knew in minute detail, and for this reason, the investigation that followed was child's play. In no time, the cabal was completely clear to Don Bosco. Before dismissing his heaven-sent messenger, Don Bosco wanted to know how he had discovered the plot. Overcoming his reluctance, the lad replied that for the past several days, our Lord had showed him, as in a mirror, all he had told Don Bosco, adding that after Holy Communion that very morning, 
our Lord had severely chided him for failing to tell Don Bosco. Because of their sanctity, Don Bosco had such great faith in his boy's prayers. At times, when someone asked him for a special grace, he would say, I'll have my boys pray. He and his boys were one in heart. Their combined prayers worked miracles. Mrs. Valaudi, a great benefactress of the oratory, begged Don Bosco to obtain from Our Lady the grace of going through her purgatory here on earth. She was frightened at the thought of the torments awaiting the souls not yet pure enough to be admitted to God's presence, and nothing could allay her fears. Don Bosco promised his help. He then prayed that her request would be fulfilled, and he had all the boys do likewise. Within a short time, the good lady was seized by atrocious pains that lasted well over two years. Afterward, she experienced an unalterable peace of mind that banished all her fears. She died a tranquil, painless death. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you'd like to hear about an oratory boy named Zuka who received apparitions of Our Lady, just click on the video above me here. God bless you, and Our Lady keep you.